All right, guys, I'm answering one of your questions today. This one I got through Instagram. And uh, the person's asking about wearing specific fougere fragrances in his home country of Malaysia, where it gets hot and humid. And he asks which one he should uh, wear. Uh, he's offered five suggestions himself, and then he wants five suggestions from me as well. So today I'm going to let you know which fougere fragrance would be perfect to wear in a very hot, humid, uh, you know, country like Malaysia. So if you want to find out about the fragrances I suggest and recommend, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Fougere fragrances to wear in hot countries. Humid countries where it gets really hot and humid, you want to make sure you have the freshest ones but still have some substance to them. And as I said, uh, I received a question from, uh, well, I guess one of my followers on Instagram and I thought this would be a great video topic to do on its own. And uh, I, as I had mentioned in the past, sometimes I will include them in the very long uh, questions answered videos, but sometimes they deserve a separate video on their own without um, featuring them in those questions and answer his video. So today I'll discuss about the five fragrances he's considering and then also offer up five more that I will you know offer up with my own suggestions. But before I get to the question, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So how many of you are a fan of fougere fragrances? Mostly men wear fougeres. But I've, I've, I've noticed some women wearing them as well. I think some women like the smell of lavender. And even though I feel like these lean masculine, there might be some that might uh, be unisex enough for women to pull off. But I, I find this uh, to be a great genre of fragrances. I guess one of my very, very first favorite genres dating back to... God knows though when I first started smelling fragrances on my dad and uncles and things like that. So let's read the question that uh, this uh, follower has uh, uh, written to me. Hi Mr. Perfume Guy, need your opinion about which one to choose for a signature fougere fragrance. I will wear it daily for work, daytime mostly. Right, right now I'm in between Penhaligon Sartorial, Fougere Royale EDP, Nishane B612, MFK Masculine Pluriel. I live in a tropical country, Malaysia, so it's quite warm and humid during daytime. Thank you in advance for your response. I'm open for any other suggestions from you, also considering HDP Casanova. So I had recently reviewed HDP Casanova. If you're curious to learn about that particular fragrance, uh, go uh, catch that one. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about Penhaligon uh, Sartorial. And hot, humid countries, I think, uh, are uh, perfect for fresh fragrances and aromatic fragrances, woody fragrances that don't get too deep and rich. Uh, so. Considering this one, let me read you the notes. This has lavender, oak moss, honey, beeswax, woods, metallic notes, amber, tonka, and myrrh. So this particular fragrance, even though it's an eau de toilette, it has warm notes. Honey, beeswax, myrrh, those are all considered uh, warm notes. So if you're having issues dealing with cloying fragrances during uh, the heat of summer with humidity and things like that, I don't recommend this one very highly, although because it is an eau de toilette, it might be fine. So I would recommend you um, test this one out to see how it works. And obviously he's considering this one, so it must be working fine. And again, it's eau de toilette, it's kind of on the light side, but it does have those warm notes. And those are the kind of notes you want to avoid when it's really hot and humid outside, especially if you get uh, the experience of cloying fragrances. So this one actually, to me, is a great uh, fougere fragrance. And it also kind of hints at uh, Brute, this green bottle fragrance back in the day when my dad and uncles wore this fragrance. So it kind of brings back memories of that particular fragrance. And it's a classy gentlemanly fougere, kind of on the warm honeyed uh, side of uh, fougere, as I said, because of the beeswax, the myrrh note, and then also the honey note. So test uh, to see if this will work. And again, as I said, it's got warm notes, but it's um, you know it's an eau de toilette. I don't think it's going to get as cloying, but still depends on how you react to fragrances. So I, I do recommend it. And also, I think you can find some great deals on that one. 
Now this next one is the original bad boy Fougere dating back to the late 1800s. It's Fougere uh, Royale. This is the EDP version, not the x rated Parfum version, which is like $600 for 100 ml. Um, this is by Hubagon and the original uh, came out in the late 1800s. This is a redo of the original, so this particular version did not come out in the late 1800s. But to me, this is probably one of the best options for uh, this person um, because there aren't any warm notes here whatsoever. Those are the notes you want to avoid, especially if you think, I mean, obviously he's asking if uh, it's a hot country, it's humid, so he probably has issues with fragrances that feature warm notes. But Fougere Royale EDP features notes of lavender, geranium, oak moss, green notes, clary sage, carnation, chamomile. Every single note that I just uh, read off to you, they're fresh notes, they're not warm notes. And uh, as I said, those will be the ones to avoid. And I personally think Fougere Royale is a perfect, perfect choice to wear in this kind of an environment. And it's also very, very classy, and I love it. It's almost like a fusion of lavender and geranium, but you know what? In here, it does have carnation, it says, but to me, it's also smelling a little bit like cloves, and those are the warm spices you might want to avoid as well. Although, I am recommending one in a little bit myself that um, features warm, spicy notes, but obviously, they're mentioning uh, carnation here. So, carnations and cloves, to me, have a similar smell, so it depends on what it is, but I, I do recommend this one as a great uh, suggestion for his particular, uh, you know, environment. So, that's Fougere Royale EDP. I'm sure you guys know about that one. If you don't, then you probably have not been uh, following my channel for a while. Go catch some reviews I've done on that fragrance. The next one is from uh, Nishane. It's B612 this one right here. Now this one I also think it's also perfect for his environment or his uh, country with the temperatures they have there but this one does get a lot woodier than the previous one whereas the previous one is a lot of aromatic and uh, green and uh, floral notes. This one does have woods and if you think woods are too much for you to wear in the heat and humidity then this one might not work but the reason this is very woody is it's got a, uh, a major prominent uh, cypress note, uh, so it does have this kind of green, woody, uh, aromatic, spicy experience from that cypress uh, note. But there's lots of lavender here, there's lots of cashmere, and there's musk, oak moss, tonka, sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, and geranium. So I think this is a classy fragrance, once again, even though it has the woods, I think this one I do recommend. And for me, this one probably seems a little on the light side, especially for a Nishane fragrance. So I think you can totally get away with wearing something like this. But I always recommend you should always test fragrances prior. If you can get samples, order them somewhere just to test and see how it wears on you in the in the warmth then I think that's the best way to do it but for me I, I've mentioned this in the past in videos for me when I wear like well anything that I wear in like hot humid uh, places or countries the notes just come alive they just open up and bloom on me and it's like such a different experience to when I wear them here in San Francisco where it's cool most of the time. We don't really have humidity, not a lot, we do, we've been getting a lot more, but when I wear the, the same fragrances in, in a hot, humid uh, climate, they just wear so different than what they, how they wear here. So, so it depends on if you are opposed to wearing these stronger fragrances or any fragrance in the heat and humidity. But for me, the experience is they do open up a lot more. And this might open up a lot more for you in the heat where you live as well, Nishane's B612 or B612. But for me, it is a little on the light side, but still very, very woody. So that's B Nishane's B612. I do recommend that one for your uh, uh, country as well with the humidity you guys get. All right, the next one that uh, this person has uh, suggested that he would like to wear is Maison Francis Kirkjian's Masculine Pluriel, this one right here. And this is a very, very classy fragrance, and I do recommend this one as well. But for me, this one does get a little thicker. It does have intensity. It is, after all, you know, Maison Francis Kirkjian. You can kind of smell his DNA throughout the fragrance, but it definitely is 
a fougere barbershop-y type fragrance. It also kind of hints at a little bit of brute once again, a little bit, but with that uh, Maison Francis Kirkjian touch. But this is loads of lavender, vetiver, patchouli, cedar, woods, and leather. I think the only note you probably have to worry about is the leather, and obviously the leather is not very extreme in this. Lots of lavender, it's very aromatic and herbal. Vetiver is grassy, woody, patchouli, earthy, woody, cedar woods woods additional woods so i think this would be a great suggestion but i think test test it out again just to avoid the warm notes any time that you see vanilla resins amber things like that is the uh, the, the notes you want to avoid uh, in your particular environment or type of weather in your country so i do recommend this one it's a very very classy fougere hardly spoken about not a lot of people speak about this one i don't know why but most people speak about baccarat rouge or grand soir or something like that but this is really really a classy classy gentlemanly uh, fougere barbershop fragrance so check it out if you guys don't know it that's masculine pluriel from maison francis kirkjian the next fragrance i would say use with caution is histoires de parfums casanova this one right here, 1725 Casanova. So this one, the reason I would say use with caution is because it has vanilla, it has almonds, and it has amber. It doesn't act very cloying, but in the heat and humidity, it will probably get that way. For me, this is an oriental fougere or amber fougere fragrance because of those notes, vanilla, amber, almonds, those are definitely the warm notes uh, to avoid in the heat and humidity. But I really like the way this uh, smells. It's a very, very, you know, warm and spicy kind of a fougere. And it does remind me of kind of like pastries from Italy, especially since it's inspired by Casanova. He's from Italy and uh, I think it, it's a great, um, uh, you know, inspiration for a fragrance, but it features notes of lavender, vanilla, almonds, amber, licorice, star anise, cedar, grapefruit. So it does have those kind of spicy licorice -y touches as well. It's not very prominent, but what for me is prominent here is the lavender and vanilla with almonds. So if you think they're gonna be too cloying, then I would ignore this one. But still, test it out because I think it's great. Maybe you have two, you can wear this one at night and you could wear another fougere during the day. Uh, and actually it would be a nice transition because you're kind of wearing similar fragrances, a little warmer for nighttime and you know, cooler and fresher during the day. And you, either way, that's uh, Histoires of Parfums Casanova. And I'm gonna recommend several more and I'm gonna start off with the first one that's the warmest out of them all. And it's not necessarily featuring vanilla or amber or you know, honey type of resinous notes. It's featuring warm spices of cloves and and cinnamon and even though those are spices they still can get really warm the, like the experience can get warm I'm talking about Amouage's Bracken Man this one right here which features notes of cloves patchouli geranium cypress lavender nutmeg cedar musk lemons sandalwood so in the end you know it says cloves and as I was saying earlier with the um, Hubagans Fougere Royale and these do these two do remind me of one another too. I think it, even though it says cloves, I think it's carnation or vice versa. Like the other one could be featuring cloves and it's not carnation or this could be featuring carnation and not cloves. They do smell like one another. And I think just, just kind of like test it out to see if it gets too warm on you. But that clovey, that clovey carnation note is very, very prominent here. You can, you can totally smell it, but it's all very fresh and herbal and aromatic with all the notes and also very green and earthy. So I think you can still get away with this one, but if the cloves become too warm for you, those are the kind of notes you would avoid. But check it out. I think this is a great solid release from Amouage, a great fougere fragrance uh, that leans spicy because of the clove carnation note at the top here. So that's Amouage Bracken Man. Another one that I'm going to recommend is Guerlain's Le Frenchy. This is it right here. And Le Frenchy is a sort of classic styling of a, a fougere barbershop aromatic herbal spicy kind of a fragrance and it also has a lot of astringency and there's a prominent uh, lemony lemon verbena note in here so it's an herb it's an herbal aromatic citrus kind of a combo so it's a little unique in comparison to others also as i said it's a little on the classic side it does have classic touches if you like classic touches i think this would be great lots of vetiver in this bergamot Pettigran, lemon verbena, citrons, lemon, 
lavender, sage, ambergris, and tonka. It's very, very classy, but very, very lemony, tart. There's also a slight light cumin-y touch under there. They don't, recommend, they don't mention that it's in here, but I think it's like an accord created with different notes. So it adds a little bit of a sparkly spiciness to the fragrance that I quite like. Um, it has a little substance, but all the notes, except for the tonka, are on the cool, fresh uh, side. So um, it's not gonna be overwhelming, and I think it'll be a great fragrance where it goes woody, spicy, citric, and uh, you know, barbershop -y fougere type uh, styling. Anyway, Guerlain the Frenchy. Check it out if you don't know that one. I do recommend it. I think it's a great smelling fragrance, especially if you like classic uh, leaning ones. This next one's from a house called Rogue Perfumery. This is Bon Monsieur, this one right here. And this one to me is just a great old uh, fougere fragrance, barbershop-y, from an indie house where notes are kind of like at its ample amounts. Everything kind of comes alive with the notes in here. I would say this kind of leans into the fougere royale kind of direction, uh, even Bracken Man. It's kind of in that ballpark with lots of geranium and lavender. But this particular one also features, well, it features geranium, it features lavender, but loads of fur, loads of oak moss, cedar, bergamot, sandalwood, lily of the valley, carnation. So it's a very green experience. Lily of the valley as a flower is very, very green for me. Uh, it does have a light, light floral touch, but it's not an overdose of flowers. It's more very, very earthy, aromatic, green and spicy, if that makes sense. Also very, very woody. So I do recommend this one. Do check it out. It's Rogue, Rogue Perfumery Bon Monsieur. A great fragrance from a great house. Now going to a classic once again. I'm not sure if you like classics, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. I was going to recommend their latest version uh, in the Parfum that had come out early last year, but I'm going back in time to recommend the initial uh, launch of this fragrance back to the early 90s. This is Cartier Pacha de Cartier Eau de Toilette version. And this one features loads of lavender, oak moss, coriander, sandalwood, mint, caraway, anise, rosewood, mandarin, and patchouli. So the patchouli is a little on the amp side. It is a kind of a classic fragrance, but it's the early 90s. It's not the 80s or 70s, but still, you might think it's a little too mature for you. But I feel like it's a great, solid, very, very earthy, green, aromatic and spicy uh, fougere fragrance. Um, uh, it's a very clubby, uh, it reminds me of clubs, people wearing this and smelling it at clubs. It just has a, that kind of a smell to it, but a very, very solid release uh, that, uh, that I think uh, definitely is recommended by me. I just love this kind of a fragrance. But you know, one thing I also want to say, the reason I'm not recommending the Parfum because it's an Oriental Fougere, Amber Fougere fragrance. This one doesn't have those warm notes. This is more uh, appropriate for something like uh, to wear in a very, very hot and humid climate. So that's why I'm recommending this one. So this is Cartier Pacha de Cartier Eau de Toilette. If you don't know this one, do check it out. I do recommend it highly. And the last fougere I'm gonna recommend is Tom Ford's Beau De Jour. Very, very quality release from this house. Great scent, lots of lavender with this one, loads of lavender. If you like lavender and fragrances, definitely recommend the Beau de Jour, but Beau de Jour have, has lavender, two styles of lavender, rosemary, patchouli, oak moss, mint, basil, geranium, and then it says amber, so it dries down to a bit of an ambery experience, but for me, it's not overly ambery. It's mostly about the aromatic herbal touches of the lavender, rosemary, and then the earthy, woody touches of the patchouli and oak moss. Lots of mint in this one as well. So it's an overdose. It's like an herb garden come alive. If you like the smell of herbs, barbershoppy herbs, that's what it is. This is a great, great scent. Highly recommend it and I would say you can totally get away with wearing it. And the amber in the base is not too strong. It's at the end stages of the fragrance, so you don't have to worry about that because it's not projecting or anything by the time it's at the end of the fragrance. So I recommend it. This is Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, and that's my fifth suggestion by myself. Now I think it's best for you to go and sample these if you can. Get samples, test them out, wear them to work, see how they are. Maybe spray one at a time and see how they smell and things like that. But what I would do is just avoid the warm notes. Anytime you see vanilla, 
uh, you know, honey, amber, resins, things like that, maybe even warm spices, I would avoid those the most, uh, especially if you think you might have a problem wearing fragrances that feature those, those notes in, uh, you know, hot, humid uh, climate. Anyway, guys, let me know if you are fans of these fragrances. Uh, if you have sampled them and you are a fan of them and you wear them, uh, uh, put a comment down so I can find out. Also, if you have any other suggestions for fougeres, put some comments down uh, so I can find out as well. Other than that, I appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.